that gravel or some those are the special arrangement we normally have for special types of projects and stuff of that nature. So basically, those are the type of permits and rights that we have. Then you have to go for the EPA one, and also depending on the type of mineral right, you have to come to this or guest house for ratification. And that one is called, I think I take a two CC or so. Any transaction that is for extraction or exploitation, you come to parliament. So we don't bring prospecting and all those ones except the leases. That is, that is basically how the law works. It's a follow-up question. Thank you. Uh, with your explanation, we found out that uh, two categories, that's the small scale and then the, the large scale. Now, can you tell this committee who are those entitled for the small scale and then the large scale? Chair, sure, thank you very much. The small scale is open to Ghanaians only. So any foreigner who is involved in small scale is illegal. In fact, if you look at, at 900 and 995, it's even so stringent. It even goes ahead and says that anybody who you know, solicits the help of a foreigner to engage in small scale amounts to illegal mining. So it is strictly for Ghanaians, either a man or woman or you know, an adult. That's all. We, we don't allow foreigners. In fact, we don't even allow foreigners to provide support services for small scale. Strictly a Ghanaian thing. And that is it. Uh, the last case is open to everybody. Without foreigners or any of you here can come to the commission and apply for large scale. The requirements for small scale is not as stringent as large scale. Small scale, all that you need is to be a Ghanaian or sound mind. And then Either you go and find a place in a block out area, or through your own efforts, you bring your coordinates, we plot for if it's available, we do the inspection, and then we process it for you. We don't ask for financial and technical capacity. Last case, we do. Last case, before you can be granted a last case license, you need to demonstrate your financial capacity, and that you also have the technical capacity to do and take the operation, submit a work program, feasibility, and all that. Those things, we don't allow it in small scale and small scale activities are taking place in about 12, 13 regions in Ghana. Uh, when I joined commission, it was just five regions. Ashanti, Central, Eastern, Western, which included or covered Western North, and Upper East, uh, Honorable B.T. Babas area. In fact, it's been there for ages. These are the five regions. And we passed a small scale gold law, 1989. That's about 35 years ago. And even passed the Mercury law, but not the way we are supposed to use it today. And also the PMC law, 219. So 217, 219, 218 were passed to regulate small scale. And then we created offices, Dumkwa, Bibiani, you know, Takwa, and then Boga offices were created. That time, so I'm basically delving into the, our biggest challenge now. And Chair, I'll be very blunt with the committee. Until that problem is resolved, Galamse will not end. I will explain when I explain, you understand. So, 1986, Professor Akil Akpa Sawyer is still alive. He was a board chair of the Minerals Commission. The CEO was Mr. Kofi Ansa. Both are alive. Because he right from the colonial era throughout, all the way in Kruma, all the way to the PNC era. Or you can't do small scale lawfully. So when we sold off the state-owned mines and Akwesi Boche because we badly mismanaged and that's like Giho, Ghana, and Co. We sold Takwa. So sometimes when people say that, oh, we don't own the mines, we've been there before. We sold Takwa, we sold Prestia, we sold Dunkwa Continental, all those mines, Aquatia, all of them. And then the World Bank and IMF at that time advised the Rollins government that look. All your gold and your diamonds are in Togo. So why don't you allow people to do it lawfully? That's how come. I don't know what diamond is produced in Togo or gold. So quickly we passed the small scale gold law, 1989. Passed the mercury law to allow them to use mercury. That time they used to have a mercury retort. So they had a way of capturing it. And then we passed PMC so that when you buy, you can have licensed buyers. 
they advised and then we created district offices in these five regions. The persons in small scale were barely 100,000 people. The advice at that time was, for Minerals Commission was that, give money to Geological Survey Authority, which has the expertise to explore areas we have designated as blockout areas. They are still there, respectfully, chairman and committee members, blockout areas. Explore them. And then we'll give it to the small scale miners. Because the last scale people do their own exploration. So, Chair, for 30 years, three decades, government after government did not do it. I remember then, a young lawyer at Minas Commission, when we make this, they will tell us, oh, we have Guinea worm. In fact, it even got worse when we say, oh, the chances of success for exploration is barely 5%. Then they said, no, we have schools and the streets, we have Guinea worm, we have this, we have this, we have that. So we will not do it. So since 1989, we've not been doing exploration. So if you ask me, as an officer of the Minerals Commission, 2nd April 2002, being the place for 22 and a half years now, the fundamental cause of illegal mining, or galamsi, and please respect me, hear me out. I, I'll give you about five more causes of galamsi, but the main problem that is driving illegal mining is getting a place for the miners to work. Until that is resolved, we only go around in circles. So then I believe the question then is, how are we getting a place for them to work? Four ways. One, through the graciousness of the last gay people. So, Angugu Ashanti, you know, Newmont, Go Fools and Co, give us a place, we license it for them. That's what we've been doing. Number two, persons whose licenses have been cancelled for want of performance, we give it to them. Number three, where, by law, when you are giving an area to explore, let's say if you are giving 30 square kilometers and you are supposed to explore, after three years, you are supposed to give half back to government or back to the Minerals Commission, yes. So when those ones are returned, they come with what we call a surrender report. We give it back to the small scale people. Then the last one is where some of the large scale people come to us and say, oh, We've done a lot of exploration. We don't have, we want it very big. Uh, so Minas Commission, take it and give it out. Then quickly we block it, designate and give it out. Like for example, Pesos Mining, they have approached us. We're giving it out. So these are the areas. And just about three, four, five years ago, we started exploration on our own. So Minas Commission has been giving money to geological survey. We have the Bonfa block. We have the, we've given some money to go uh, UMAT and Geological Survey. It's in our budget, Parliament approved it for us, and they are doing the exploration now. Uh, chair and members of this committee, it will take time. That is our biggest headache. So this issue about equipment and co, it's our biggest headache. It's, it's getting a place. The issue is not about equipment and all those, it's getting a place for them. So when we didn't take these 100,000 five regions things seriously, we have ended up with 13 regions now, 3 million. So that is the biggest challenge that as a nation we have to address. I won't hide it until we spend money. And at least, uh, Chair, let me say that for once, the, all the political parties have been listening to us because I heard the Vice President saying that when the Commission go refining that, he has committed to making available city equivalent of $10 million to geological survey. I've also read the NDC manifesto, which is also saying that we will resource geological survey. What is the bottom line to make resources available to explore all these areas? We're talking about 3 million livelihoods in 13 regions. And Chair, give me two seconds to explain how the livelihood conundrum is. So you go to a typical Galamse site, or a small scale site. And, and please understand me, there's a difference between small scale and Galamse. So when I hear people saying ban Galamse, I have a problem. As a technocrat, I have a problem because Galamse is illegal, it's already banned. 
So you go to a small scale site, whether lawful or unlawful. This is the kind of thing you see. You find those who are in the pit, if it's open pit. If it's underground like Kakwa or Tinga or Bungo or the Bali area, those who are directly working there, those are the direct employees. Now, many of you don't know, there are more women in small scale than men. Yes. This three million we are talking about, there are more women in small scale than men. So beyond those who are directly involved in the pit, you have somebody who just gets up, clean his teeth, and then takes his aboboya or moto, he goes to the site. Let me say this in tree, or tree load. So he goes, they mark the register, and then depending on the number of load he carries, he's paid by the close of the day. He's employed. Now, Auntie Mansa, who has mounted the foot joint at the small scale site, selling all kinds of stuff there, she's there. Selling. So they go to the pit, they run shift. They come and eat the banco of food. So she's also counted in our three million. Now, that woman there goes to take the cassava. And more often than not, he even takes the cassava on credit from somebody else. And that somebody else also goes to the farmer. So that is a whole chain. The farmer, the person goes to take the thing on credit. So when you read the site, for those that are lawfully permitted, we don't have a problem. I mean, everything is fine. But when you read a typical galam says that this is what happens. The woman who is selling food there tells you, you have, I've lost my livelihood. Then you hear the farmer telling you that, oh, I have two bands, 10 sacks. She said, cry there one. And then she's also told, because they have gone to destroy that site. And then the other aspect too is that the person who also takes his bicycle or his motorbike and goes and pick their load also says that I've also lost my livelihood. So that's, that's the whole scenario here. That's how it works. So normally what we do is this. Once the district officer of Minas Commission goes around and picks an illegal, in fact, uh, honorable, when you tap a district officer and wake him up from sleep, and you say there's illegal mining going up in job 600, he can, he, there's mining going on in job 600, he can tell you straight away that it's illegal mining. Because it's a district mining officer of the Minas Commission that does the inspection. He will tell you that, oh, where I did the inspection with Lansen is this place, not that place. So what is he supposed to do? He's supposed to write a report and give it to the assembly. And tell the assembly that, on my rounds, I found this activity here. It's illegal because we are not in charge of security. So the district chief executive or MUSEP is supposed to mobilize and go and calm down on that activity. That's how the architecture work. That's how it's supposed to happen. In some areas, even the officer cannot go because the people are armed. Uh, uh, Honorable Chair and members, do you remember early part of this year, was it last year, where some policeman was kind of humiliated by some miners? You saw they were well armed. I think after some time they, they caught him. So respectfully, my officer in Konongo or NG, or let's say Bane, how do you expect him to go to an area where the miners, let's say, are armed? But these Chinese people are, 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 you know, they're armed. What do you expect him to do? So I'll give you the best example, which I said on Metro TV, the Konongo one, where they dug close to the road. You all saw it. The district officer, Asem, went around, picked it, and reported that he's gone around, he saw this, it's illegal. The Communist Commission did not permit it. They don't have any authorization or approval, not even a special permit. So it's illegal. It was reported to the assembly. Uh, Chair, once the Minas Commission officer reports to the assembly, his job has ended. He's free of that responsibility. The next thing is that this is assembly to go there, mobilize the needed resources, and calm down. Occasionally, they take the risks and do it, but I've been telling them be careful because I don't want them to lose their life. So that is how the system works. So sometimes when we are blamed, I'm not backpassing. If you want to take me on, on enforcement and compliance, I'll take responsibility. That Martin, this is a license operation. We don't think they are following the law. I will take responsibility. I'll be the first to admit that, yes, perhaps there has been laxity here. We got it all wrong or something. I will take responsibility. 
but where the officer has reported to let's say the disassembly in that particular DC that this is illegal, go and, and calm them down and they don't act. Uh, it will be difficult to blame the Minerals Commission. So these are some of the things that I want you to understand or the challenges that we have. More often than not, every report of the DC officer, and I can share examples if you want. There's nothing confidential about this because I've taken off. Where the DC officer thinks that per what he saw, it is appropriate to license them, he reports. So recently, Busa, North and South, I think on Abu Agaga's place, that area. The officer went there, and then he realized that they are doing, like we say, Koli Koli, and it's underground. That's the beauty about the North. Other than that, we'll have had serious challenges. The beauty about the small scale stuff in the North is that the bulk of, maybe God bless them, is the nature of the whole body. Because it is not for anybody to say, force them to go underground, no. So when I hear people saying, oh, we uh, uh, force the miners to do underground, that is wrong. Because you see, if the whole body is deep seated, like 300 meters or down there, you can only do it by underground. 